Here's a new skin for an old puzzle. The object is to jump over one peg at a time, and each time you do, you remove the jumped peg. If you can keep doing this, and at the end you only have one peg remaining, you win. And solving this is way more difficult than it looks. Traditionally these puzzles have been made with golf tees, but I have roofing nails here, and in this video we'll explore a couple of ways to make a fancier looking version of what is a classic puzzle. Don't worry, the solution will be shown at the end. Let's get started. First off, where do you drill the holes? In every one of these equilateral triangles that is pointing forward at the center of that triangle, that's where one of the holes gets drilled. Now, just because that's a ton of compass work, I've made you a simplified template that you can print out. Link in the description. Let's talk about cutting a board 101. The first thing that you need to get out of your head is that you don't need to do it perfectly on the first try. Think of it like golf. You just want to get on the green at first and then you can put it in later. Woodworking is a similar process of refinement. Just try to get it close at first and you can always sand it down to the line. And this applies to just about any saw. Without the right stuff, even a simple project like this one can give you some complications. In this case, we have 15 holes to drill and they all have to be pretty straight. If you have a drill press, no problem at all. But if you don't, at least you can make a jig like this to help you along the way. I have a video that will go into more detail about this jig, but just to keep this video moving, we'll use the drill press. following is completely optional, but it's just too cool not to include it in the video. As long as you're in the mood for a little bit of extra sanding. We just start by drawing six curves, one on each of the points of the triangle. And now we just sand those curves away. Because we're doing this on each side of the triangle, what we end up with is kind of a compound cut. And when we smooth this all down, it approximates a portion of a sphere. Why is it worth doing all of this work? Because after some sanding, once you finish this, you will really be able to exploit the wood grain in a beautiful way. Next up, the nails. These are three inch roofing nails, but I would like to cut them down to two and a quarter inches. And to do that, I've made a simple jig. There's a considerable amount of work to do with nails in this project. For safety's sake, we want to cut the points off and smooth them down just so that nobody pokes themselves. And if you have some extra time, you can practice those hacksaw skills. But there's also some extra work that you can put into the nails by polishing them. And you can do this a number of ways. Sandpaper is always an option, but of course we can also spin them in a drill and get some high speed shininess. One way that we can fancy up our nails is with polymer clay. The process is actually called caning. 
In this case, it's called a jelly roll. You simply take two contrasting sheets of colored clay, roll them up into a jelly roll, and then you roll it out until it's stretched to the desired length. You can also cut the canes again and reassemble them, and in this way you can increase the complexity of your design. If you have not seen this art form before, I would invite you to check it out. It's something else. If the canes are kept on a piece of cold glass, they'll deform less whenever they're cut. Be careful if you use this trick, but removing the spine from the back of a razor blade makes an excellent cutting tool. Rocking the cane back and forth gently as you cut will also reduce the amount that it gets squashed. Yet another trick that I like to use is to just keep an ice pack nearby, and then periodically you can rest your piece of glass on it. That way you can take your time. A cane can be built that is surprisingly complex. It's impressive just how much detail they'll preserve. Before we can apply this pattern, we first want to prep the nails by using some scrap clay to sort of build up the shape that we want. At this point, we want to warm up our little slice of clay so that it will stick to the nail. We can do this in the palm of our hand. Gently roll it around. Use something smooth to fold it back under and on itself. And now simply repeat this 15 times. might have noticed that the puzzle shown at the beginning doesn't look like it's made from polymer clay, and that's because it's not. These were made from marbles that have been cut in half. In this case, it was a metallic looking marble that was cut and then epoxied to this nail head, and then it can be chucked into a drill to be spun so the edges can be polished with sandpaper. Cutting a marble in half is not the easiest thing to do but I have found two methods that work reliably. A rotary tool with a diamond wheel works well enough as long as we give it a continuous stream of water. And that can easily be done using a siphon bottle. My preferred method still has to be the wet saw. Cutting a marble in half on a tile saw like this is no problem at all. As long as you're using a continuous rim blade. And it's not anywhere near as dangerous as it looks. As long as you don't apply pressure to the blade, your fingers really aren't in any danger. Of course, you don't have to cut the marbles at all. And while we're at it, there's no rule that says we have to use the nails either. If you like this idea so far, wait, there is a catch. Consider that a golf ball and a marble are both spheres of a different diameter. And so, in order to get them to fit together nicely, it's advisable to drill out a little bit of the golf tee just so they sit together nice and tight. 
for the strongest bond possible, first I clean the marbles with alcohol, and then I heat them up with a heat gun. Epoxy will thin when it's warmed, and so it seems to grab onto the smooth glass much better. And that's it for the puzzle's pegs. Now let's move on to some of the finishing touches. The woodworking here is pretty basic, so we're looking to fancy it up a little bit, and one great way is to chamfer all the edges. But another thing that looks really nice is to give it a simple round over. There are two key variables to remember. Ask yourself, is the bit spinning at the correct speed? And is the bit sticking up out of the table at the correct height? If you can balance those two things correctly, you can make perfect routes. The idea is to attach the marble to the nail, and while doing so, you want to cover all of the imperfections in the glass. But there's a secondary goal, and that's to capture this sparkle. Hopefully when it's done, it will look something like a blue star sapphire. Who knows how many ways a puzzle like this could be constructed. As such, you're limited only by your own imagination. I hope this video has encouraged you to try your hand at making a combination of your own. Let me know which combinations you liked. And as promised, here's the solution. See you next time.